So uh, our speakers today are Stefano Masai and Estelle Massa, who are both winners of the 2020 Householder Prize for their doctoral theses. We will begin with Stefano, who earned his doctorate in 2017 from the Scuola Normale Superiore di Pisa and is now a postdoc at Eindhoven University of Technology. He currently works on low rank approximation, hierarchical matrices, and tensor formats. He will be presenting his recent work, Maximum Volume and Cross Approximation of Symmetric Semi-Definite Matrices, Theory and Algorithms. And with that, uh, we'll hand it over to Stefano. So if you could start sharing your screen now. Yeah, so thank you, Catherine, for your introduction. And uh, thank you to all the organizers to give me the privilege of speaking at this very nice uh, webinar series. Can you, can you all see the screen? Uh, so no objection, so I assume that everyone see it. Everything's uh, working. Okay, <laughs> so in today's talk, I would like to tell you about this joint work with uh, Alicia Cortinovis and Daniel Kresner from EPFL. And so the, the central notion of this, uh, of this project uh, was cross approximations uh, of, a, of a given target metric C. So cross approximation, also known uh, as uh, skeleton approximation and uh, as particular cases of CUR decomposition or CGR decompositions are particular low rank approximation, which are built uh, on uh, rows and column subsets uh, of the target matrix in, in the form given in this, in this picture here. And um, as you can imagine, uh, building such an approximation is much cheaper than, for example, computing the truncated SVD, although the truncated SVD is, uh, let's say, the optimal solution uh, if you're interested in the accuracy in a certain unitarily invariant norm. But uh, truncated SVD is costly as a cubic cost, uh, and this is much cheaper, and so it, uh, it is advantageous to, uh, to use such an approximation in contexts where we have to deal with, with large-scale uh, matrices and where we cannot afford uh, a qubit cost. So, for example, in, uh, in building H matrices, but also for approximating covariance matrices, kernel matrices, and similarity matrices, and this concept has also been generalized to uh, tensor format. So, but uh, in this talk, we are mainly interested in uh, matrices, and we are interested both in uh, studying algorithm for uh, building uh, this kind of approximation, and also in providing results that uh, about the the error uh, of the result in approximant. And in particular, uh, we would like to uh, retrieve bounds that uh, link the, the error with uh, quantities that are usually um, linked to the, to the best uh, low rank approximation. So uh, let's say function of the, of the singular values of the target matrix. And historically, uh, the, the first result in this direction is this theorem by uh, Gorenov and Tertishnikov that, tell us that uh, tells us that if we select the, the row and column indices in a way that this core set matrix here obtain the maximum volume possible among all the R by R sub matrices, for example, then uh, we can bound the, the entry-wise uh, magnitude of the error uh, with, the, uh, with R plus one times the R plus one singular value of a matrix. So uh, one can intuitively be, say, okay, let's look for the for the maximum volume submetrics uh, whenever we want to find a, a cross approximation. But unfortunately, uh, finding exactly the, the maximum volume submetrics of a certain shape is an NPR problem. And so uh, one has to go for a greedy heuristic strategy for, uh, for finding this uh, core matrix or equivalently to select the row and column uh, su uh, subsets. And uh, in this work, we also made another uh, additional assumption on our target matrix. And we consider the case where the matrix A is uh, SPSD, is symmetric, and all its eigenvalues are positive. And in this framework, um, one can uh, manage to show that uh, the maximum volume submetrics has an additional property that is, that is a principal submetric. So it, it can be attained 
by um, a symmetric choice of the row and column uh, index set. Although this is a very nice property and uh, considerably simplify the search space, this does not cure the NP-hardness of, of the problem. So one has any way to deal with, with the use of uh, heuristic strategy. So the, the first, challenge, uh, first challenge in this project was to actually show this property. And uh, the way to go is to, to go via the, the Holesky decomposition of the metric C, so something C transpose uh, times C. And uh, so if one uh, consider a generic uh, powerful submetric here of A, uh, then one realized that it is given by the product of these block rows and block columns of the, of the, of the Holesky decomposition. And uh, in particular, if one use some classical uh, inequality for singular values, one uh, can write uh, an inequality for the determinant of the powerful submetrics. Uh, where at the right hand side, we have the product of the singular values of these block rows and these block columns here. So in particular, uh, uh, we can replace uh, one of these two guys with, a, with a, um, the one that realized the, the maximum among the two. So suppose that the product of the singular values of the, of the, blue, mat uh, of the blue matrix are bigger than this, then we can replace these block columns with the transpose of these block rows. And if you do that, uh, what you get here is exactly the determinant of the principal submetrics uh, was index, uh, indices correspond to the, to the row indices selected here. So uh, the, the argument is that for any such uh, submetrics, you can always find the principal submetrics whose determinant is bigger. Okay, so th this is nice, but uh, how do we compute, at least in an approximate way, uh, a good candidate for uh, a max volt submetrics. Well, the maybe the most uh, well uh, popular uh, query strategy for that is the so-called adaptive cross approximation uh, that uh, we with diagonal pivoting, which works uh, as follows. So, in the in the first iteration, you look for the um, for the entry for the diagonal entry in, in your given matrix, which has the biggest magnitude. Let's say this P1. And then you select the, its corresponding row and columns, and you form this rank one approximation of your matrix. Then you subtract this rank one approximation, getting a residual matrix R1. And this R1 matrix uh, is such that it has zero in correspondence to the row and column that you selected before. And then you iterate the, this procedure. So at some point, you will have a certain residual matrix that takes this form. Then you look for the uh, the biggest element on the main diagonal, so let's say this P3, you get its uh, row and column, and you subtract the rank one approximation, augmenting the, the rank uh, of the proximal here. And you proceed until you get something that is, uh, until you select R indices. Uh, so this procedure is quite simple, but it is also rich of structure, so uh, rich of properties. So the, the first one is that by construction, the, the, the cross approximation is SPSD because of the symmetry of this construction and the fact that the core matrix here is SPSD. And moreover, also the residual matrix is uh, SPSD uh, at any step. In order to, to check this, uh, you can see that the, the non-zero entry of the residual matrix, so for example, the entry here, correspond to the sure complement of the submetrics AJJ in A. And since the sure complementing operation maintain the, the SPSD structure, then as a result, you have that also the residual matrix is SPSD. So you can look at the sequence of approximation returned by ACA as R increases as a monotone sequence of approximation where monotone has to be intended in the SPSD sense. And maybe more importantly, you can uh, uh, provide uh, a very efficient implementation of this method, avoid forming the residual matrix explicitly in every step. Because you, the only thing that you need of the residual matrix are the diagonal entries for uh, uh, choosing the pivot. So you, you just need to update the diagonal entry and the column and row that you select for, for the proxy. So at the end of the day, you can provide an implementation that has a linear cost uh, both in storage and in computational time.
Moreover, uh, so this can be shown to be equivalent to Gaussian elimination for complete, uh, with complete pivoting, at least in this structure case. And uh, the product of the pivot elements that we select is equal to the determinant of the core factor. So this explains why ACA is a greedy algorithm for volume maximization, because in each step, we select the PJ such that makes this determinant as bigger as possible. However, when you, uh, when you ended up this algorithm, you have no idea of the relation between what you have and the maximum volume submatrix. So that's where our uh, work started for concerning the computational part, because we wanted to uh, provide a procedure that uh, return a, a submatrix that has some optimality uh, property uh, for, for its volume. And uh, okay, we cannot, uh, we cannot attain the global optimality in view of the NP hardness, but um, we are happy if we have some uh, local optimality defined in this, uh, in this equation here. So we, we say that uh, a certain choice of indices J is locally optimal. If I cannot improve it, if I cannot improve the determinant of the associated submatrix, just with the replacement of one of its indices. So if J is maximal among the, uh, the set of indices J hat that has these properties here. And uh, the idea is to build a procedure that check that uh, this condition, uh, that this condition hold. And since the number, uh, the number of se uh, sets J hat that uh, have this property here is N times R, and uh, computing the determinant as a cubic cost. If we do this check naively, just running, uh, computing the determinant of all of this quantity as it is, then we get a cost that is R to the four times N, which is not super bad, but uh, we can do something smarter. And the, in order to do something smarter, you have to, to observe that each matrix, sub matrix AJ hat, J hat, is actually a rank two perturbation of the starting submatrix AJJ. And you can write explicitly uh, the, the low rank factorization of the corrective term. So if you, if you go on, you can uh, apply the matrix determinant lemma and uh, express the ratio of determinant as the determinant of a specific two by two matrix. So a small matrix whose entries can be written in terms of these matrices here, B, C, and D which are uh, linked to the old cross approximation, to the cross approximation uh, which makes use of the index set J. In particular, C is exactly the, this uh, old uh, cross approximation. D is just the core factor, and B is the product of the block columns and the core factor. And if you look at the expression of this two by two matrix, you see that what you need are just the diagonal of the core factor the diagonal entries of the old cross approximation and all the entries of this matrix B. So once you compute B, C, and D, you, can, you have all the ingredients to evaluate all these determinants here and so in turn all this, uh, this ratio of determinants here. So this suggests the, the following procedure for uh, find a local maximum volume. Uh, that reads as follows. So you start with a, with a guess for J, for example, the outcome of adaptive cross approximation, R steps of adaptive cross approximation. And then you try to, to refine this set uh, with the following iterating scheme. You first compute the Holesky decomposition of the core factor. Then you compute the inverse of the core factor, the, the matrix B and the diagonal of the cross approximation. And then you can uh, compute all this quantity here and identify the, uh, the pair of indices i and h that uh, provides the, the maximum of, of this value here. If this maximum is less or equal than one, then it means that our determinant is locally optimal, so we stop. Otherwise, uh, we uh, exchange the index uh, h and the index i in the in our index set J. So we update J and we go back to two and we uh, iterate the procedure. So uh, we can actually do slightly better, uh, oops, uh, in terms of complexity. 
by observing that um, from uh, iteration two, uh, all these matrices here are rank one update of uh, are rank two update, sorry, of the of the previous one. So again, one can uh, go via updating the whole ASCII decomposition and using the Woodbury identity to compute the ND. And this uh, reduced by a factor R, this complexity here. So at the end of the day, you can um, provide a procedure that if uh, in the case of it iterations, uh, as a complexity of R times R plus it times N. So um, this is good in terms of complexity, but can we say something about uh, the accuracy of the, of the outcome? Well, it turns out that uh, the same uh, upper bound for the entry-wise uh, uh, norm of the error is, uh, is the same as the one that holds for the, for the maximum volume submetric. So we have the, and that the maximum of the error is bounded by R plus one times the R plus one singular values. And uh, so how do we show this? Uh, how can we show that? Um, so in the case where N is just R plus one, then the claim, uh, you get the claim easily by observing that AJJ is the maximum volume submatrix here. So it's just uh, the result of Gorinov and Tershchenikov. For the general case, first observe that you can bound the, it is enough if you bound the diagonal entries of the, of the residual because it's SPSD. And observe that any diagonal entry of the residual matrix is actually the sure complement of uh, your submatrix in a slightly larger submatrix where we just uh, use the index H, um, where we add the index H to the, to the index set J. So in particular, we have again that AJJ is the maximum volume submatrix here. And so this first inequality holds in view of Gorinov and Tirtishnikov. And finally, you can use the, a classical interlacing property for the singular values to, to get a fi uh, the, the final bound. So here are some uh, experiments um, for checking the, the performances of, of the algorithm. So in this, uh, we took this exponential kernel matrix. And so in these three experiments here, we fix the dimension to about a thousand and we let R varies. And we check that the computational time scales quadratically with R, uh, that the, um, we check the approximation error with respect to the, to the bound provided in the previous slide. And we see that actually this bound, it seems to be off by, by a constant, but at least the, uh, the decaying behavior seem to be well described. And finally here we, uh, we plot the, um, the gain factor. So the, the ratio uh, between the determinant of the matrix returned by max ball and the one determined by, uh, and the one uh, returned by ACA. And finally in, the, in this last plot, we fix instead uh, uh, the parameter R and we let n varies to check whether the, the cost of the two algorithms is, uh, is linear. Okay, so in the, in the second part of the project, uh, Instead, we, we focus on other norms, so other than the, the maximum norm. And our goal was to, um, was, uh, to find alternative way uh, to, to provide cross approximation that can guarantee to have um, a bound on, of the error of this form. So in particular, where we have the same norm of, on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side. So for example, uh, does, uh, does such a bound hold, for example, in the Frobenius norm? And uh, it is, uh, so the, the first question that one has to uh, address is whether such approximation exists because it's not, it's not obvious because uh, we are looking for very special uh, low rank approximation built on rows and columns of the, of the target matrix. Well, for what concern the, the Frobenius norm, Zamanashkin and Ozinski uh, answered uh, uh, positively to this question uh, recently. And they show that for any general matrix A, so not SPSD here, just a general also uh, can be also rectangular matrix and any R, uh, there exists a, a choice of I and J such that this bound is obtained here. And their proof uh, exploit a probabilistic argument. So they, 
uh, they select a certain probability distribution on the set of possible choices for i and j. And uh, this uh, probability distribution depends on the, on the volume of the corresponding submatrices. And they show that the expected value of uh, the um, approximation error in the Frobenius norm actually ver verify the bound. So uh, if expected value with respect to this probability. And this means since the expected value is uh, an average that there is at least one choice of i and j which verify uh, the bound. In, if we go back to our framework, so in the SPSD case, it is tempting to try to prove something analogous just by uh, replacing this uh, i with j. So uh, assuming a symmetric choice of indices. But unfortunately, such a, uh, such a bound has been proven to, to not hold. But we can uh, show something uh, similar is just a matter of changing the norm. So we can actually show that if we stay on principal submatrices for uh, in the SPSD case, we can find something that is quasi-optimal, but with respect to the, um, to the nuclear norm, which is defined as the sum of the singular values. And that in the particular case of SPSD matrices uh, also correspond to the trace uh, of the matrices here. And the proof uh, is a slight modification of Zamaraskin and Oziskin results where we just uh, change the, the probability distribution here. Uh, and uh, with the same argument, we show that the, the expected value of, of the cross approximation error verifies the bound. Okay, these are uh, a nice result, but they uh, didn't tell us anything about uh, how to compute the um, uh, approximation that have these properties. And uh, to deal with this, uh, to, to deal with this task, Kortinovis and Kresner have recently uh, provided a, a, poly, a deterministic and polynomial algorithm that find a quasi-optimal cross approximation in the Frobenius norm by de-randomizing the result of Zamaraskin and uh, Osinski. So the, their approach is based on the method of conditional expectation and can be uh, also applied to, to our results. So that's what we did. We, we applied uh, their, um, their approach to, to, to the proof of the result in the previous slide. And this translates into um, an algorithm that selects the index set J with an augmenting procedure where every time you uh, add to, the, to, this in, uh, to a partial version of J, a new index set that verify this minimum problem. So you add the, the index that minimize the conditional expectation of the, the approximation error, where you condition on the uh, fact that you already, cho uh, you already chosen the first T uh, elements into uh, the first T elements of J. And so this seems uh, a bit cryptical, but if you um, develop some computation, then you can simplify this criterion as the uh, choosing the, the, index, uh, the index JT, which minimize a certain uh, ratio of two uh, coefficient uh, in the characteristic polynomials of the associated uh, residual matrix. So in the partial uh, residu uh, residual matrix RJT. So this suggests to, uh, to use this uh, as a criterion for choosing the, the next uh, index. And so it uh, leads to, to the following, uh, following uh, greedy scheme uh, that we call certified cross approximation that works as follows. So you start with a residual matrix equal to the, to the target matrix A, and then for any possible choice, of J uh, that is not already in capital J here, you compute the residual matrix uh, associated with, each, with this choice. So this uh, difference here, then it's characteristic polynomial and this ratio. You do this for every J and you select the one that minimizes uh, this ratio. Then you update J, you update the residual matrix and you iterate until you get R indices. Of course, this is a vanilla version of this algorithm. You don't really want to compute residual matrix and its uh, characteristic polynomial for every, for every J here. Uh, you can do something smarter also here by noting that 
again, this uh, matrix here is a rank one modification of, this, uh, of the residual matrix R at the previous step. So uh, what you can do is start with, uh, with an eigen, eigen decomposition of the matrix R and update uh, the, the eigenvalues for any possible J. And then use a uh, technique for retrieving the characteristic polynomial from the eigenvalues, like the summation method, for example. So in the interest of time, I do not provide uh, further details, but I just want to tell you that one can run the, um, this iteration with a, with a cubic cost with, uh, with respect to n. So since you are doing r iteration, you can run this algorithm with complexity r n to the three. And so this is uh, some numerical test for checking the, the approximation property of the approximant uh, returned by, by this method. And uh, so we see, uh, so these four test matrices differ in the, uh, in the decay rate of their singular values. And we see that for slowly uh, decaying singular values, these upper bound seems quite pessimistic but it seems more tight for rapidly decaying singular values. And it seems optimal uh, for, uh, for the case of the, of the Hilbert matrix. So here are some conclusion. Um, and so maybe regarding this framework, maybe uh, the biggest problem is actually um, to, to find an appropriate theoretical framework that is plain the good behavior of adaptive cross approximation with complete pivoting. Uh, so the, the basic algorithm that we use, it, in many cases, it already returned uh, an approximation whose uh, accuracy is comparable with the one of truncated SVD. But uh, theoretically, it is difficult to predict such a behavior. Many of the bounds available for ACA contains exponentially growing term that uh, makes the bounds very pessimistic. So this is still um, an open problem. And for what concern is that this certified uh, cross approximation business? Well, we, we have shown an algorithm for its computation, but again, we, it's a polynomial algorithm, but its cost is n cubed. So uh, it is not feasible to apply such algorithm in large scale scenario. What would be desirable is to try if combining this algorithm with some reduction, maybe heuristic technique, you get something that uh, works uh, decently also for, uh, for large scale matrices. And uh, I think that's all. Thank you for your attention. Okay, uh, thank you, Stefano. That was a great talk. Um, we will now uh, uh, pose questions. Uh, so uh, Davide, are there any questions on Zoom? There's no question from Zoom. Uh, uh, Hussam, is there anything on YouTube? I have no questions on YouTube, neither. Okay. Uh, oh, wait, we just got a question from Folke Mammon in the chat. Uh, could you compare this with random selection of J? Uh, with random selection of J, um, if, uh, I don't know, because if you don't add any any assumption? Uh, how would you uh, provide uh, an approximation error bound for uh, for the cross approximation of a random J? Okay. Uh, now he says repeated <laughs> random selection. <laughs> I don't know if you also see the chat. No. Uh, Re repeated random selection, uh, but um, maybe according to some probability. Maybe, uh, maybe I have in mind this, uh, so um, many computational scientists uh, sample rows and columns according to uh, a probability that refer to the norm of the column and the rows. And, they, and then they provide um, uh, and bounds that uh, are mm, linked to some probability. So they say this holds with uh, uh, up to a certain probability. But um, mm, uh, I'm not an expert of, of this kind of result, so uh, I don't know uh, how to compare this to, to this framework. 
and maybe in this SPSD case, you have enough strong structure to to avoid such uh, such sampling. So, for uh, for example, here ACA is uh, is quite effective. You already have complete pivoting for for the residual at very low cost. You just have to to look into the di and diagonal. So maybe for uh, for this framework, uh, you can really stay deterministic, I would say. Okay, uh, thank you, Stefano. Um, and maybe you guys can continue discussing this um, in the breakout session later. Um, I will just...